Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use digital elevation models in order to perform a 3D analysis over a mining site. So we're going to do a few different tasks in here. But the first thing, let's just quickly take a look at the kit that we've put together. So the, what we have in here is we have basically our input files for creating the DEM. So in this case we're going to create a digital elevation model from Worldview 3 stereo imagery. We already have the Worldview 2 DEMs extracted, and we're providing that to you. And we've already prepared the results. So basically in here, we're going to show you how to use these DEMs. That, uh, well, one, show you how to extract them, and two, show you how to use the DEMs in order to perform a volumetric analysis. So we're going to compare two different dates, 2014 and 2013, and then 2013 to 2010. So we provided the results for you so that you can compare the results that you've generated with the results that we've generated. So to begin, we need to extract the DEM from the Worldview 3 data that we have. So for this, we can start, we can open up Geomatica, open up Ortho Engine. We're going to start a new project. So we can go new here. We're going to browse, we'll just go to our desktop. We'll call it, so we can go into the 3D analysis kit. We'll call it, uh, Worldview, so WV3 underscore DEM extract. We're going to change this to optical satellite modeling. We're going to choose rational function extract from image and click OK. So here we need to set our output projection for our DEM. So we can go into our raw imagery, just open it up and focus. And we're just going to go and take the projection. So in case you didn't see that, I'll do it again. We're just going to click on the files tab. Right click on our file, go to properties, click on projection. We're going to copy our projection. We can close focus at this point and we're just going to paste it in here. And then our output, sp uh, output pixel space will be 0 0.3, so 30 centimeters. Uh, but this is actually for the output ortho and we're not going to generate the ortho in this example. So at this point we can click OK and we can move on to the next processing step, which is adding our input data. So we can click on here, go to add image, we're going to go to a raw image, we can select both of them simultaneously, click open, OK, and we're not going to click overviews or create overviews in this example. So usually you would be, uh, it'd be in your best interest to collect a ground control point and a stereo ground control point for the two images and perhaps two dimensional tie points, but uh, we've already actually done that, exported the math model into these PIX files so we have accurate models to work from. So here we can actually skip this step and go right down to DEM from stereo and begin basically extracting the process of extracting our DEM. The first thing we need to do is to create epipolar images. So we can just go here, click browse for where we want our epi output epipolar images to be written to. So in your Worldview 3 uh, data folder in the sales or in the kit, uh, you'll have an empty epipolar folder to store this uh, imagery. Once we have that, we can click on Maximum Overlapping Pairs down here. Keep this at 50%. We'll go Add Epipolar Pairs to Table. We'll keep this at Down Sample Factor at 1 to get the best detailed DEM. And we're going to generate our pairs. This should only take a few seconds. All right, we have our epipolar pairs now. So we can close this and we can go to the next step, which is to extract the DEM automatically from these epipolar images. So we can collect or select our epipolar images, a stereo pair. And we can go to, uh, here we need to change a few settings. So the detail that we need, because we're performing a volumetric analysis, should be extra high. The terrain type, in this case, I'm going to change to mountainous, just because we're dealing with some relatively complex stockpiles with some steep slopes. We'll change our datum to mean sea level. And we're going to provide a smoothing filter at medium and apply a Wallace filter, which is meant for handling shadows from generally very steep terrain, but is also useful for clouded areas. And our imagery does include some clouds, so we will have some noise as a result. So we need to do our best to handle that at this stage. So next thing we can do is we're going to create a geocoded DEM, so we're going to click that, and we can browse for an output folder, 
and create a file name. So we'll just call it wv3 underscore 2014 underscore dem and we'll save that. We're going to set our resolution to 60 centimeters or 0 0.6 meters and then we can click extract dem. Okay, now that our DEM has extracted, we can uh, close our Ortho Engine project. If you wish, you can save it. And we can begin our volumetric analysis. So you can see our DEM here. So we'll just take a look at it. So it's actually a DSM. And as I said, we do have some uh, artifacts as a result of cloud and cloud shadow. Uh, so, I mean, if you would like, we do have the tools necessary to clean this up. So you can go to Layer, go to DEM Editing, and then if you wish, you can just click on a new polygon layer, and you can draw a polygon around these features, for example, like this, or you can go all the way around all of them if you like. I'm just going to show you one quick example of how to do this. So if we want to remove these bumps, I'm just going to set this bump filter really large, and we can apply it a, a number of times until the bumps are essentially gone. And we can do the same thing for the pits. So we can go to remove pits, set it to a much larger value. And we can click that a couple times until it's gone. You can see we're going to get a nice smooth transition. You can keep doing it if you'd like until it's completely gone and smooth. So this is just one example of how to do that. Once you're done this, you can basically click on save here. It's going to ask you to um, save your vector file. That's fine. Just call it vec. Go save. We can save that here, and now our DEM has been saved. And you can go through the rest of the DEM if you wish and fix it up. However, uh, our area of interest that we're going to be performing the analysis on does not include uh, the, the noise due to cloud and cloud shadow. So it's not really necessary if you don't want to do that. Okay, so let's just uh, remove these layers and let's get ready to perform our first analysis. So, first thing we need to do is we're going to load our 2013 DEM. We're going to perform our first time series analysis between 2014 and 2013. So we can just take a look at the two DEMs. So you can see that there is some similarity. There's more detail in the Worldview 3. It's a higher resolution. Uh, the Worldview 2 is a 1 meter. Worldview uh, 3 is a 60 centimeter. So we do have more detail and it tends to be a bit smoother. And, but you can see that a lot of things have, for the most part, stayed the same. But we do have some new features, particularly you can see this feature uh, was added in the World View 3. And a few other features were either removed or added, and we want to be able to extract uh, those features. So the other thing we need to do is we need to define our area of interest. So we're going to load this polygon, which I've already pre-drawn for you. And... This is going to basically define where our um, analysis is going to be performed. The other thing we need to add is just a quick polygon that outlines our trees because we do not want this to be included in our change analysis. Another option is to remove the trees using our DEM editing tool. Okay, so at this point, we can now begin to perform our analysis. So we can go to Analysis up here. We're going to go down to Change Detection. And in the setup window, we're going to click on the 2014 as our top file. And for the layer, we're going to make sure to choose the first layer, the 32R layer, which is the DEM. For the second one, we're going to choose 2013. And same thing, we're going to choose the DEMs, 32R. We're going to uncheck absolute value in percentiles. We want the meters, the exact change in meters. And we can load it, for example, as a pseudo color. Next we can go to our masks. We're going to change our add an inclusion masks. So we're going to use that as our AOI to make sure that the analysis is only performed within this vector polygon. And an exclusion mask, which is going to be our trees polygon layer to make sure that uh, we're not performing the analysis in here. Okay, so at this point we can just simply click run and we're going to get our change map. So it's essentially a heat map or a change map where we have identified features that have um, changed significantly. We can see the actual change in meters. We click on the layer, and if we look down here, you can see that, for example, under this pixel, there's been about 19 meters and 35 centimeters 
that have been actually removed, or sorry, have been added uh, from 2013 to 2014. If we go to this area over here, we can see, and click on this layer, you can see that the value is negative 12 to indicate that we've actually lost information. So the next thing you're going to want to do at this point is to basically extract this change, these changes as polygons. So what we can do is we can go to Tools, Algorithm Librarian, and we're going to choose the XPolRAS. If it's not up here and you're recently used, you can find it in all algorithms. Just type in EX. It'll bring you down to XPolRAS. Open up this uh, control panel here. And we're going to minimize the files. Go to our unnamed map. We're going to choose our change layer. And we're just going to, we can just put the output to viewer or we can save the output if we wish. But in this case, we'll save it afterwards. And now here we can set up our uh, thresholds and area, uh, minimum area, maximum area that we wish to be included into this analysis or to this extraction. So here, because uh, we have such a big time difference between the two DEMs, uh, all, uh, about a year, uh, there's a lot that's changed on the ground. So to make sure that we don't uh, basically extract the entire feature, we just want to extract the major changes, so the major stockpile changes. So for example, if we click on here, we want to extract these features, but Make sure that we don't extract here, which is less than a meter, which could be due to various reasons. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set our threshold in this particular case to about 3. So in this particular situation, I'm going to extract only changes where it's changed more than 3 meters. Uh, if you want to set yours lower, by all means, it's completely up to the user. Our minimum area, I'm just going to set 300 just in case we have any minor shifts in our DEM. This will help prevent uh, noise from being, uh, from being extracted or false positives. And basically, at this point, we can just simply click Run. Okay, so sometimes it's hard to see the polygon. Oops. And that's partly because we have a polygon on the outside, so you just have to delete that one and delete the one for the trees. And these are actually your polygons that we've extracted. So if we take a look at the areas or the actual features that we've extracted, we can remove these two polygons. We can see we've extracted the areas where features have been added between the two years. So if we look at the 2013 uh, data set and remove this, you can see that there is no feature, for example, here, but then there is the feature is obviously added in the 2014 data set. We've extracted those. So if we want to extract the other side of the spectrum, the areas of the features that have been removed, we can do the same thing, so we can actually go into here. It's the same uh, form of analysis. But what we want to do in this case is we're going to actually change this value so that it's a, the minimum value is going to be a low negative number, just something that will be much, should be much lower than the changes that are here, and potentially that's not enough, so you might want to even increase it. And we'll just set this also to negative 3, just to say that, you know, we want to make sure that we're getting anything that's changed by more than 3 meters and we can run this. And now you can see that we've extracted change for the other um, part of the spectrum or where we've actually lost features. Once again we can take a look at or provide a different color code and then you can see that we've actually extracted these features. So what I've uh, done here, so I'm just going to close this, and you can save these, but what I'd actually like you to do, in your case, I'd like you to repeat this step, but compare the 2010 DEM, the Worldview 2 2010 DEM, with the 2013 uh, DEM, so to get the other part of the time series. In the end, you should end up with a result that looks similar to this for 2014 to 2013. So here we have our change layer in just black and white. Here we have it in a pseudo color, and here we can see the actual DEM. So in the green is where we've gained uh, between the two years, and then the uh, red is where we've uh, lost features. So you can see under here, for example, this is the new feature that's been added. And you can see under here, this is where we've actually lost uh, lost sediment. So this was 2013, and now 2014 looks like this. And then in your 2013 versus 2010 analysis, uh, you'll get a result that looks like this. 
uh, for your 2013 versus 2010, same color coding that basically the red identifies where we've lost features. So if we compare, you can see that there's a significant amount of loss in this area. And then if we look here, we can see where we've gained. So for example, this feature, or these features around here. So if we remove that, you can see that there's actually a significant gain there.